Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a rational expression. We have a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. And that is basically the definition for a rational expression. So I'm, I'll be presenting three methods and I'm hoping to keep this video short without rushing too much. Okay, first method. First method is almost all the time the most painful, the most boring method. But it's just a method anyway, something that works. And that is called long division. Okay, something that you have to learn if you're studying algebra. So I'm going to take this and divide it into the numerator, which is the fifth power. So I'm going to write it as x to the fifth power plus x plus 1. Obviously, different countries write division in different ways. I know some European countries that are going to switch them around. But basically, this comes from the fact that we're dividing something into something larger. Okay? Well, in the polynomials, you can't really say larger, but you get the idea, hopefully. Now, I'm going to divide x squared into x to the fifth. So I have to ask, x squared goes into x to the fifth how many times? The answer is x to the power 3. Because when you multiply x to the third by x squared, you get x to the fifth. Now, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the x to the third here by multiplying. And that's going to give me x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus x to the third. In long division, you remember, we subtract, but with polynomials, we kind of negate the second one and add. That is equivalent to subtracting. And this gives us, and I'm going to write this in terms of powers, like from the highest to lowest. We're going to get this. Don't worry about the one. We're going to take care of that later because I only need three terms. Now, I want, to, I want you to look at the largest degrees. x squared goes into negative x to the fourth how many times? The answer is negative x squared. That's going to give me negative x to the fourth minus x cubed minus x squared. Again, the negation will happen, and we're just going to add, giving us some you know zeros here and there, and we end up with x squared plus x. Remember, I told you, don't worry about the one. We're going to take care of it. Now is the time, bring it down, and you get a perfect division problem because the remainder is supposed to be zero. x squared plus x plus 1 goes into itself exactly one time, and if you distribute, you don't really need to worry about negation because this is subtraction and, and the remainder is going to be zero. Awesome. Hopefully this makes sense, and we get the answer, right? So the answer is x cubed plus x squared, oops, that's supposed to be a minus sign, x cubed minus x squared plus 1. So when you divide, you get that. So let's see if we can use another method for this, and that is going to be my second method. Now for my second method, I'm going to use a different approach. So let's go ahead, and since we know, obviously, it's kind of cheating, but we know that uh, the top is divisible by the bottom, so why don't we just assume a polynomial that is appropriate for the quotient. So I should be getting something like x cubed, right? Because I'm dividing x to the fifth by x squared. And then somewhere um, in the middle, I'm getting some other terms. Uh, so this is going to be like a cubic. Uh, so I can write it as x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus 1. And now I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. That's going to give me x squared plus x plus 1 multiplied by x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus 1, and that is supposed to give me the, co the, the numerator, which is x to the fifth plus x plus 1. Now, if you distribute this, and I'm, I'm just going to give you the answer, um, you know, without further ado, you can write this as when you multiply, you're going to get x to the fifth plus b plus 1 x to the fourth plus b plus c plus 1 x to the third plus b plus c plus 1, a lot of repetition here, x squared plus c plus 1 x plus 1. Awesome. Now, it's supposed to equal this. Therefore, we get the following. This is supposed to be 0. There's no x to the fourth here. This is supposed to be 0, and this is supposed to be 0. They all have to be 0, but these two are the same, so it doesn't really matter. The coefficient of x is supposed to be 1, which means c is equal to 0. Awesome. What about the other equations? 1 is 1, and b is equal to negative 1. Great. So we only needed to find b and c from here. Now we can go ahead and plug it in and find the answer. So the quotient, when we divide x to the fifth plus x plus 1 by x squared plus x plus 1, it is supposed to be x cubed minus x squared plus 1. 
because B is negative 1, it's going to go here, and C is 0, and that's going to go here. Awesome. This brings us to the end of the second method and the beginning of third method. Let's go ahead and talk about the, the most awesomest method. And we're going to use factoring. And what are you going to use factoring? How do you use it? Well, since we already know twice that x to the fifth plus x plus 1 is divisible by the bottom, which is x squared plus x plus 1, why don't we kind of try to break it down? So I'm going to write the x to the fifth plus x plus 1 as x to the fifth minus x squared plus x squared. So I'm going to use a, an old trick, but notice that this is divisible by x squared plus x plus 1, and this is divisible by x squared plus x plus 1 because it is x squared plus x plus 1. Therefore, by the whatever the theorem is, I don't know, this is supposed to be divisible by that as well, but it doesn't matter. You can just factor it. Let's go ahead and factor this. You take out x squared, you get x cubed minus 1, and then you can put a 1 outside just to make it kind of complete. Now this is difference of two cubes, this is where the fun starts. You can write it as x minus 1, x squared plus x plus 1, and yay, we got a common factor. We can go ahead and factor out the x squared plus x plus 1 here, right? So this is a common factor. We can basically pull it out and the rest will follow. And we're going to get x squared times x minus 1. If you go ahead and use the distributive property, just multiply, you're going to get x cubed minus x squared. And then from here, you're just going to get plus 1. So what is that supposed to mean? Let's go back to the original problem. It was x to the fifth plus x plus 1 divided by x squared plus x plus 1. But now I was able to factor the numerator right, which is x to the fifth plus x plus 1. So I can now replace the numerator with this, x squared plus x plus 1, multiply by x cubed minus x squared plus 1, and the bottom just stays the same. And guess what? We have x squared plus x plus 1 cancel out, and we end up with the answer. So basically, this is kind of like a divisibility problem. These polynomials are fairly interesting, and x squared plus x plus 1, by the way, can never equal 0 because its discriminant is less than 0. It has no real roots. It has complex roots or non-real, whatever you want to call that. But uh, it can't be 0, so we didn't have to worry about any of the any domain issues. It's not going to happen. If you graph the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you should be getting the exact same graphs. All right? And... This brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.